Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at a combination of transformations and we're also going to talk about some invariant points. Now before we do that I'm just going to show you where in the video you can find more because obviously with transformations you have translations, you have reflections, you've got rotations and you also have enlargements and within that you've also got negative and fractional enlargements and this concept of invariant points. So I'm going to link all of those lessons in the description I'm just going to show you now where you can find them. So when you're on one of these videos if you click into the description you'll see that I've got everything listed within there. I've got hard questions to try, I've got checklists and practice papers that you can download and other questions and other videos within this series. Now if you scroll down to the bottom of the description you'll see down there it says topics featured in this video. So in there I'll put all the links with difficult questions and topic videos related to this topic right there for you to access. So just click onto one of those and it'll take you on to more practice questions and different versions of this topic. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so looking at this question, it says here the diagram shows a triangle P on the grid. Triangle P is rotated 180 degrees about 0, 0 to give triangle Q. Triangle Q is then translated by 5 minus 2 to give triangle R. Describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle P onto triangle R. And that's an important point there where it says single transformation because obviously we're going through two transformations to get there. So we need to figure out what's the single transformation that does that. Now the first transformation here is a rotation, so it's a 180 degree rotation about zero, 0, so I'm going to mark that rotation point just there. Now if I was doing this in an exam, I would now put my tracing paper over the top, making sure that it covers the rotation point and the shape, I'd trace the shape, put my pen on that rotation point, and then turn the tracing paper around 180 degrees. In the description, I have linked a video where I'm going to sh where I show that more thoroughly and show you exactly how to do that. So if you're not sure on how to do a rotation, then do check out that video as it's all animated to show you exactly how to put the tracing paper on, where to put the pencil, and how to obviously rotate it round and redraw it back in. So I'm going to do this without a tracing paper method. So I'm going to draw a line to the rotation point, and you can see there that that is two squares down and one across. Now if I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees, the shape is also going to rotate 180. So the shape is going to be in this orientation after the rotation. So I know what it's going to look like and I can figure out where that point is going to go. A 90 degree rotation would take that point to there. 180 would take it to here. And a 90 degrees or a 270 degree clockwise rotation or 90 degrees anti-clockwise would take it just to there. So I know where the point's going to go by using this sort of method as well, although I would recommend using the tracing paper method. So I know that this triangle is now going to go three squares down, one across, and then reconnect it back up. And that's going to be my 180 degree rotation. And that is triangle Q. So I'm going to label that with a Q. So there we go, I'm happy with my rotation. I now have another transformation, and it says that it's been translated. So translated means it's going to move, and it's going to move by the vector. And the vector we've been given is 5 and minus 2. So 5, the number on the top, means that it's going to go 5 places to the right. So if I pick the bottom corner of triangle Q, and I move that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's going to go across to there. And it's also going to go down by 2. So 1, 2. So that bottom corner is going to end up right on the bottom of the grid. So I'm going to get rid of those little jump lines and I'm going to redraw the triangle in. So again it's going to go three squares up, one square across on the bottom and then join it all together. Obviously doing this all with a ruler and a pencil. And that is triangle R. So there we go, we'll label that triangle R. So the question now says describe fully the single transformation that maps P, our original triangle, onto this new triangle R. 
and as you can hopefully see that has gone through a still a 180 degree rotation but now the new position the rotation point is no longer zero zero the rotation point now is going to be somewhere to the right a little bit so in order to figure that out you can either um, join up some similar points which could be very difficult for me to do on the screen or you put your tracing paper over the top again like we did in the first place and again I've got a video linked in the description showing you how to use that method and then you just have to guess a point so you put your pen on the paper you guess a rotation point you spin it 180 degrees and if it lands on triangle R then you know you've got the correct rotation point the other method is you get a ruler and a pencil and you join up those similar points. And if you join them up, and I'm going to be very difficult for me to do here, obviously you've got to do a ruler and a pencil, and you join them up very carefully. And you will see that when you do that, they cross over perfectly on that rotation point. But this only works when it's a 180 degree rotation. So if you join them up, you can see that they do cross over at that particular point. And this happens with a 180 degree rotation because it's also the same as doing a negative enlargement. So that if you know negative enlargements well, which again is linked in the description, you'll know that a 180 degree rotation around that point is the same as a negative enlargement at that point with a scale factor negative one. So we found the point just there. So that coordinate is 2.5 and minus one. And that is our point of rotation. So for the description here, we would write that it is a rotation. That is 180 degrees. Remember with 180 degrees, we don't need to state the direction. So it's okay to go clockwise or anti-clockwise. And then you just say about the point or around the point and just state that coordinate. So that's a 180 degree rotation around the point, and it's a bit of a weird one with a decimal, but 2.5, negative one. So that would describe our transformation. That's a single transformation. Of course, as I mentioned, you could also say that it is an enlargement about the point 2.5 minus one with a scale factor of negative one. So that is your other option. So I'm just going to mark on that rotation point just there and get rid of these lines because we're going to have a look at part B. So these are all of our transformations that we've done. We did our initial rotation, then we did a translation, and what we've found is the single transformation from that point. So that's a 180 degree rotation around that point. So part B here says under the transformation that maps triangle P to triangle R, so from our original triangle to this final one that I've drawn in green, the point A is invariant. Write down the coordinates of point A. Now invariant means a point that hasn't moved. Now normally when we look at invariant points, and in the video where I've gone over invariant points, it's quite common that actually the transformation ends that the one of the points is still touching. So for example, maybe that translation moved the triangle two places to the right, and then one, two, three, four places up. And if it had have done that, then you'd have seen that the top of that triangle there would still be connected. And therefore, that coordinate right there within that transformation wouldn't have moved. So this is a little bit different because obviously the triangle is nowhere near triangle P. Triangle R and P are completely um, on the other side of the grid. So in terms of the invariant point this time, the only point that hasn't moved within that transformation is actually the point of rotation. So this point right here didn't actually move throughout that transformation. Okay, it's gone through a 180 degree rotation, the triangle has moved, but that rotation point stayed the same throughout that transformation. So this is a bit of a strange question here, because actually the invariant point is actually the point of rotation. And you can think about it this way, if you were to use tracing paper, when you did that rotation, the only point on the like within that transformation that didn't move would have been your pencil. So where you put your pencil to do that rotation, that point won't have moved. So this is a bit of a strange question, but actually our invariant point in this question is 2.5 and the negative one, the actual point of rotation that we had to go through in order to conduct that single transformation.
But there we go. The important part here is to know what an invariant point is, and it's a point that hasn't moved. And just like if we had have got a point just here, where they were connected, and we said, well, this point hasn't moved on the triangle as they're still connected, we could think about that as being a rotation around the point, and that's one, two there. So our invariant point in that particular transformation would have been one, two. So yes, they are connected, but actually it would have been the rotation point which stayed the same. So there we go, a slightly different question on invariant points. And obviously, as I said, I will link all of these topics in the description. So you'll be able to have a look at the translations, reflections, rotations, and enlargements, and obviously doing them all in reverse. And as well as that, I have a video there on invariant points. So I hope this video was useful and helpful. If it was, don't forget to comment, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.